Okay, good morning, afternoon, or evening. How are you doing today? And sorry about that. Welcome back to Mr. Morrill's Algebra class. Today we are going to start Chapter 3. We're skipping over 3.1. A lot of people were wondering why, why, why. I just don't find it um, very useful for the real mathematics that we're going to be seeing. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the more important stuff. And we're going to learn today about 3.2, which is relations and functions. And before we can learn about relations or functions, or before we can talk about that, um, we need to really, really understand the x and y coordinate system. Excuse me for one second. OK, sorry about that. So like I was saying, you really need to know what the x and y coordinate axis is, how it works, what, how to label it. We need to really understand this. Now, first of all, this coordinate axis, that's what it's called, is also called a Cartesian plane. So in case they say, draw this line or draw this uh, relation or draw this function on a Cartesian plane, OK, or a Cartesian axis, that's what that is. This is a Cartesian planar axis. It's also known as a coordinate plane. Okay, and it was invented by a French mathematician by the name of Descartes. And the legend has it that he was lying on his bed and he saw a fly going from one point on his ceiling to another point on his ceiling to another point to another point. And you know, back then there wasn't a, a lot of entertainment like TV or iPads or anything like that. So what he decided to do was actually draw out all the points the fly had gone to. And then from those points on the, on the ceiling, he wanted to organize them in a, in a uh, you know, fashionable way, in a way that was understandable. So he created the X and Y coordinate axis. So it's pretty cool. So what is this that he created? Well, you see, first of all, two very dark lines. Those are the main axes, OK? You first have the x-axis. The x-axis, if you notice, is attached to a horizontal line. Okay, Horizontal line. How do you remember that that's the x-axis? Well, I always try to think of the horizon. If you've ever gone to the beach okay, and you're standing at the sand and you're looking out towards the water, isn't the horizon flat like the x-axis? Okay, So remember that the horizontal axis is the x-axis. And the values of the x-axis, they are known either as the input, the independent variable, or the domain. Please remember that. The x values on the x-axis are known as the input, the independent variable, or the domain, OK? And we already learned a little bit about independent and dependent, didn't we? Remember we talked about cost, expenses, income? Remember the cost was dependent on the number of items you produced or that you sold? You guys remember that? OK. So that's the x-axis. That's the x-axis. The y-axis. Well, the y-axis is the opposite of horizontal. It actually goes up and down. It's vertical, like a column that holds up a building. Okay, So the x-axis is horizontal. Remember the horizon. And the y-axis is a vertical column. And the y-axis is known as the output, because it is the answer to the equation once you plug in the input. It is the dependent variable. It depends on the x value. Y will increase or decrease depending on the x value. And it is also known as the range. So the y-axis, the values on the y-axis, those are the outputs, the dependent variables, and or the range. Okay. So y values are output dependent variable or the range. The x values are the input, independent variables, and the domain. Now, 
the origin. The origin is the point exactly where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect. And this point right here of the origin is 0, comma, 0. Because the 0 value is for the x, and there's a 0 value for the y. Now, how did I write that? What, what did I just do there? Well, what I did was I just wrote an ordered pair. And an ordered pair is the way that you write points on an xy coordinate axis. You are always going to write the x value first, followed by a comma, and then the y value. So if you look at the point that I have here in blue, it's 4, 3. Why? Because I went 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x, 4 on the x, and then I went up 1, 2, 3 on the y. So my ordered pairs are an ordered by alphabetical order. The x value comes first, then the y value comes second. And it is placed in a parentheses. And if it is not written in that exact order, it will be marked wrong. That makes sense, everybody, so far. OK. Now, let's just remember domain. We had mentioned domain and range. The domain is all of the possible x values. These are called the input values or the independent variable. And please remember that the range, those belong to the y's. The range are all of the possible y values or the output values or the dependent variable. Okay? Domain, possible x's, range, possible y's. Now, let's talk about a relation and a function. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. You have an input, which is your x, comma, the output, which is your y. Any set of ordered pairs is a relation. Any set. They don't have to make sense. They don't have to be part of a formula. Any ordered pairs written down in a series, in a collection, is called a relation. OK, sorry about that. So a relation is simply any set of ordered pairs. All right, so I gave you, there are four ways, not I gave you, there are four ways that you can write a relation. You can write it as ordered pairs, just a set of ordered pairs. 1, 8, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, 2, just a set of ordered pairs. Remember, the ordered pairs, you've got to have the x, comma, the y. If it's not in that order, unfortunately, it is wrong. You can have what's called a mapping diagram, okay? And a mapping diagram, actually, wait, this got shifted a little bit. This should have been here. This should be here. Right, because it's 1, 4, yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know why this got messed up here. Yeah, this 3 should be here. 3, 2, yeah, this got all messed up. Sorry about that. Is it messed up like that in your paper? Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, fix it. Okay, and I'll, and I'll show you what I made, what mistakes I made. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so if you look at the, the ordered pairs you had, didn't 1 relate to 8? So that's a mapping. 1 goes to 8. 1 also goes to 4. 2 goes to 9. And 3 goes to 2. So you can have a mapping diagram like that. That's another way to show what your inputs were and your outputs and how they related. So that's another second way to write an order uh, to write a relation. <laughs> Number three, you can make a table of values, an input and output table. Input, remember, that's the independent variable. That's the x. Depending on what x is, y will change. Y is the output or the dependent variable. So I can make an xy table and sh you know, show my values, show my ordered pairs, but in a table. 1, 8, 2, 9, 3, 2, 1, 4. 
And then the last way that I can show a relation is by graphing all of the points. This guy right here, this is 1, 2, 3, this is 3, 2, this is 1, 4, this is 1, 8, and this is 2, 9. So I've got four ways that I can write a relation, okay? And these four ways that I can write a relation, I can also write as a function. And we'll talk about a function in a second. But let's get some domain and range practice here. I had told you that the domain are, uh, express all of the, the excuse me, ex, bleh, the domain expresses all of the valid x values. So in this graph here that you have in front of you in their notes, what are the valid x values for this little graph here? Sir? How about we put it in inequality, since that's what we've learned? What are my valid x values here? Okay, let's think about this, guys. We're going to have to use a little bit of, of just past knowledge. What's the point right here, first of all? What's the ordered pair there? Okay, negative 3, 2. What's the ordered pair here? 5, 5, 5. Okay, guys, isn't this the x and isn't this the x? So aren't all of the valid x values between here and here? So didn't we just have a test to show you how to write this inequality? How would you write this inequality, my man? x is greater than or equal to because it was a solid circle. Negative 3, correct? And less than or equal to 5. That is fantastic. Very good. So, do you see how to read domain, guys? You read domain by the valid x values. What x values were valid inside of this graph? Well, I went from negative 3 all the way to 5. Weren't all of these x values valid because they all hit a y value? Do you guys see that? Yes, no, maybe kind of, sort of. Okay, now, let me erase all of that, and let's go range now. Okay, so I know that my domain, we could keep that, though. My domain was x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than or equal to 5. Now, what is my range? My range is the up and down. It's the y values. So here are my y values. My range goes from here to here. So what are my possible range values? Sir. Fantastic. Y is greater than or equal to 2, but less than or equal to 5. Fantastic. Why, Mr. Morrow? Check it out. Is there a point on this graph where y is 3? I mean, where y is 2? Yeah. Here where y is 3, isn't there a, a value on the, on, the, uh, on the graph as well? How about when y is 5? Isn't there a value here on the graph as well? So doesn't that mean that everything in between also has a value? So the values that are valid in the range, the y values, are between 2 and 5. So y is less than or equal to 2, I mean greater than or equal to 2, but less than or equal to 5. Yes, sir? How do we know that y is greater than 2? Because y is 2 here, but then it goes up here to 5. So it has to be greater than. So usually when you go above something, it's greater than that. Thank you, sir. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What's the domain here? What's the domain here? Here, it's not in a graph. So you can actually list the domain. What are the domain values here? <coughs> Thank you very much. 6, 5, 2, and 1. That's simple. My input is the independent. That's the x value. That's the domain. What's my range here for this mapping diagram? 
negative 4, negative 1, and 0. Why? Because those are my output values. How about, for example, 3? What's the domain here? Go ahead. 5, negative 1, negative 4, and 0. And yes, sir. And those are braces, braces. And what are my range values? What's the range here? Yeah. 3, 4, 9, and negative 5. That's exactly right. Those are my valid range or y values. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Last but not least, if I give them to you as ordered pairs, what's my domain here? Go ahead, negative 3, 0, 2, 9, and 23. Again, the domain are the valid x values. What's the range here, my brothers? 14, 7, 0, negative 18, and negative 99. Excellent. Why? Because those are my y values. My y values express the range. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Yeah. Awesome. May I continue? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Now, functions. Here we go. <laughs> Everything that we've been doing has just been leading up to this. Relations are good to know. you got to know what relations are. But a function, that's what makes the world go round. So please pay attention Please ask questions. Please remember this. This is going to haunt you for the rest of math. So, a function is any relation. So, already we know that a function is a relation if where each element of the domain corresponds with exactly one element of the range. What does that mean in English? In other words, it is a relation where there can only be one y value for any given x value. You can only have one y value for any given x value. Before I explain how it works here, let me show you a real life example. When you go to the movies, roughly it's about 12 bucks per ticket, right? Right, guys? This is a function, and I'll tell you why. If I go in and buy two tickets, I pay $24, right? And if you go in and buy two tickets, it's $24, right? And if your friend buys two tickets, it's 24 And if your girlfriend buys two tickets, it's 24 And if my mom buys two tickets, it's 24 And if my dad buys two tickets, it's 24 And if my sister buys two tickets, it's 24 Do you see how I have the same Y value for the same X value? Would you, would you accept it if, after you saw all these people pay 24 you go on the line and they say, oh, two, two tickets, that's $30. Do you see how I have two different Y values for the same X value? That's not a function. A function cannot have that. A function is a set formula. You go into those movie theaters and you're going to pay $12 per ticket, period. Not because they're evil or they're mean. That's the function of their ticket. Now, they can charge you one price and me a different price and Johnny a third price and student XYZ another price. Then it's not a function. Then they're just flipping a coin. They're saying, oh, I want to charge you 6 and I want to charge you 10 and I want to charge you 12. You can't do that. A function is a set formula. And it does not change. So that's why you cannot have different y's for the same x. If I had a function y equals 2x plus 3, when x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3, y is going to be 5. 
Can I ever plug in one for x and get the answer seven? No. Don't don't be scared of it. Look at that, guys. Will two plus three ever equal seven? Do you see how you have two different y values for the same x? That can't be done. That's not a function. If you have something like that, it's a relation still, because a relation can be any ordered pairs. But if you have two different y values for the same x value, that means it's not coming from a formula and it's not a function. I know you guys have studied this last year. Does this make more sense? Yes, no, maybe kind of, sort of. Okay. So let's take a look at some functions and let's see which are functions and which are not functions. <laughs> determine whether each is a function. Remember, they're all relations. So determine whether each relation is a function. Okay, here, I got 1, 8, 2, 9, 3, 2, 1, 4. Is this a function or not? No, why? Not the ones are different. The, there it is. You have two different y values when x is 1. So that is no. That is not a function. How about number 2? 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, 1, 8. Yes, when x was 1, y was 8. When x was 1, y is 8. Now, some people may say, whoa, you can have repeating y values? Sure, absolutely. You just can't have repeating x values with different y's. How about here? Look at here, I guess, gave you the next example. 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, 2, 1, 4. So this is a yes. How about this next one? No, you have different y values for the same x values. So that's a big fat no. How about the fourth example? That is a function. You have no repeating x's with different y's. Next, so this is a yes. Next, 15193248. Why? Thank you. You have two different y values for the same x value of 1. So that is a no. That is not set to a particular formula. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, let's look at ordered pairs this time. I got 4, negative 1, 8, 6, 1, negative 1, 6, 6, and 4, 1. Is that or is that not a function? You keep going. It is not a function. Good. Why? Very good. You have two different y's for the same x of 4. So no. Yes, sir, you had a question. The fourth one is not a the fourth one is a function. Do I have repeating x values with different y values? There you go. So it's a function, my brother. Thank you for verifying that. Thank you very much. How about last but not least? <laughs> negative seven, fourteen, nine negative negative seven, fourteen, seven, seven, fourteen. Yes. Do I have a repeated x value with different y values here? Yes. No. So this is a function. Are you guys with me here? Yes. Like I said, I know that they taught this to you last year, right? How many of you saw this before last year, function? Is this making more sense than last year? You promise? Okay, awesome. May I continue? Yes, thank you. Okay, that we already did. Okay, now. Last thing, guys. Sometimes they're going to ask you, do you have a function or not? And they're going to give you a shape or a figure or a graph. Well, there is something called a vertical line test. And by vertical line, I mean a vertical line, a line that goes up and down. It's a column. And the way that it works is like this. The vertical line test helps determine whether a relation is a function. The vertical line test states that if a vertical line passes through more than one point on the graph of the relation, then the relation is not a function. Let me explain why this works, though. Everyone knows what it is. Very few of my students really understand why. So let me explain it to you if you guys don't mind. Vertical line test. Start randomly just doing some vertical lines throughout the whole graph. How many points did it hit? 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 
How many points did it hit? So that is a function, yes. Now, pay attention. When I do a, a vertical line test here, there's an x value right here, correct, that I'm drawing my line through, right? Because remember, this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. So I'm drawing a vertical line through one particular x here, right? Do you see how I have two different y values for the same x? That's why the vertical line test tells you, no, dude. It tells you no without having to calculate. It shows you immediately. Hey, reader, look. For this x, you've got one, two different y's. Sorry, Charlie, not a function. Does that make sense? If I make a vertical line test here, at this x, thank you, sir, I went through one, two different y's, not a function. Through this vertical line test, look at this. Look at all the different y's I'm hitting here. All sorts of different y's, right, for the same x. That is a big fat no. Even if I do it here, at this particular x, I've got two different y values. So that is a no. Yes, sir, thank you. If you do it outside the circle, you're not actually testing the function. Thank you very much for asking. But yeah, then you're not testing the function at all. Thank you. So that, that's not valid. That right there is not valid. Does that make sense, everybody? Awesome. Thank you very much. And I hope you learned a lot.